Hi guys, welcome to Who's Junction. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2017. Hope you have much success. I hope that you're going to fulfill your New Year's resolutions. But right now, we're going to dive right into the 2017 predictions for the NBA season. So for the rest of the season, I'm going to give you an idea of what's going to happen. Now, I'm not Nostradamus, but I'm going to take a look into my little crystal ball. And I'm going to let you guys know exactly what I see. Number one, by the trade deadline in February, the Los Angeles Lakers are going to make a trade to get the Marcus Cousins. You heard it here first, Boogie is going to go to LA. Now, how do I know for certain? I don't know for certain, but I'm going to tell you just a few things that we can both, we can both agree on. Boogie is number one, unhappy in, at Sacramento. Number two, Shaq and Vladdy Divac are minority owners in the Sacramento State and they have roots in LA. So they could possibly swing a trade that probably would consent like Clarkson and another young prospect, maybe Randall, to the Sacramento Kings and in, in terms get the Marcus Bucky Cousins. Now, that's not a long shot, is it? If you think about it, the Marcus is gonna be a free agent coming up pretty soon. He's not happy there. So instead of not getting any value for him, make a trade, get the Marcus, and the Lakers track record, they're great at getting big men. They know we had Dwight Howard, we've had Shaq, we've had um Kareem in the past, got him from Milwaukee, Los Angeles Lakers, even though it's been the many down years. They know how to pull things off, you know. But that's one of the prediction I got for you. Boogie Cousins going to LA. Another prediction I have for 2017. Russell Westbrook is going to be the second unanimous MVP ever in the, in the history of NBA. This is going to be the first time we see back-to-back -back unanimous MVPs, and I'm going to tell you why. Although James Harden is clearly doing great things in Houston, I don't see him sustaining his run the way that Russell Westbrook can. Because James Harden has a lot more pieces around him than Russell Westbrook. So that means a lot more other people to handle the basketball. Russell Westbrook is the initiator of the offense. He's the go-to guy to score. He's the go-to rebound. He's averaging more rebounds than anybody on his team, which is ridiculous. He's not even a big man. He pays to pass Will Chamberlain's Triple double record for, for a season. And he's on pace. Listen, to what I just told you. He's on pace to average a tri triple double the rest of the season. So if he does this feat or gets close to it, he has to be the Williams MVP. There can't be any debate. You can't say this guy did that. Russell has absolutely nobody on his team besides Steven Adams. <laughs> Victor Lodipo has not played up to par. So if he can get his team to a fifth seed or a a fifth or fourth seed, which it looks like it can happen because Portland, a team that I thought would be doing great, has actually fallen from grace. If they can go to a fifth seed, Russell Westbrook is going to get the MVP. It's going to be unanimous because he's one of the few guys that when he gets in a game, it's electric. You never know what's going to happen, and he's just that guy. And here's the funny thing. I'm not even a big fan of Russell Westbrook. I'm not like, because he, he plays with a lot of uh, reckless abandonment. And I don't think that's sustainable. But what he's doing right now is undeniable. Like, nobody can deny it. Even, even if you were like a hater, if you don't acknowledge what this man is doing, then you just don't know basketball and you're strictly operating off emotions. If you look at his numbers, if you look at the plays that he's making for his teammates, this Thunder team looks... It, it looks like a JV squad. It looks like an NBDL team. <laughs> and he's able to keep them afloat. And they're winning games and he's getting triple doubles. So that's another tri uh, prediction I have for 2017. Russell Westbrook wins unanimous MVP. The Cleveland Cavaliers would not make it to the NBA Finals. Now, number one, some of their key pieces are ailing with injuries. So J.R. Smith hurt his thumb. Out 12 to 14 weeks. So it's going to take time to acclimate him back into the offense. Number two, Kyrie Irving. He just hurt his thigh. I believe it was New Year's Eve. He, he hurt his thigh. They didn't put him back into a game. And he sat a game. 
LeBron James has been taking a lot of rest this season, which tells me a lot of people see it as, well, as they're gearing up for the finals, yada, yada, yada. Well, all that tells me is this. There, there's something going on with LeBron James that nobody knows. That's why like every season he's been losing weight and he's been trying to keep ahead of the curve to make sure he doesn't get injured. We all know he takes care of his body, which is great. We, it, he, he does it better than most people, probably better than anybody else. LeBron has that durability of like Karl Malone. If you, if you ever watch Karl Malone's old tape, you will see him lifting three, 400 pounds. He used to stay in shape, running up mountains. That's like LeBron is like a mountain man. <laughs> he's, he's like a freak of nature. But there's something going on for him to be resting like crazy like this. He's already rested, I want to say, four games already. And every time he's rested, his team has not been able to win. And that that goes to show you that although they're trying to prepare him for the playoffs, whatever may have you, there's something with his body that's going on. Like For him to be this consistent, he's due for a breakdown. So that's what I'm saying. Like Their whole health... Is, 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 a, is a shaky factor in them getting back to the NBA Finals. Another thing that you have to remember, the Cavaliers bench isn't as good as it was last year. The bench last year was a lot better, and it had it had better depth, to, to be honest. They brought in Chain and Fry, which is fine, but mind you, Birdman, he's out for the season. Then, they don't have Matthew Della Vadova anymore. So, and then they brought in Mike Dunleavy, which is good, and they have Richard Jefferson, but their bench is very, very old. <laughs> like, so their bench isn't, a, isn't as good. But the, the thing that they got going for them is that their roles are defined. But like I said, health, we, we're, seeing, we're seeing some kind of breakdowns here that nobody wants to talk about. Nobody brings this up. They're thinking, a lot of people just say, oh, they're resting, it's not fair. Yeah, yeah. There's something going on that nobody's talking about. And we will see down the line. We're gonna see. We're gonna see something. Something's gonna be said. You know, Jr. had the accent. He's gonna come back. But there's gonna be something said because if you're going to the NBA Finals, the playoffs, you have some of the oldest benches. And yes, they're gonna make it where you have less back to back in, in the finals, but not in the in the in the playoffs. In the playoffs, the schedule is gonna be like much more quicker, swifter. So teams in the East got better. Celtics got a little bit better with Al Horford. Um, the Toronto Raptors, they're, they're the same, but Indiana Pacers got a little bit better with Jeff Teague and they have Al Jefferson. I don't see it being a cakewalk like how it was before in the past couple of seasons. And even, believe it or not, the Hawks got a little bit better as well because they have Dwight Howard, which is a great rim protector. So, I just mentioned four teams that improved. Before... The, the uh, Cavaliers only had to worry about two teams, which is Toronto and Atlanta. Now they got to worry about four teams. That being said, if they have to run into them, it could be some problems. <laughs> I'm going to say this again. LeBron James has been to six straight NBA Finals. Sometimes you can keep a streak going. Sometimes it's inevitable for you to do what you do. Sometimes there's a lot of luck involved. For LeBron, it's a mixture of skills and a little bit of luck because for you to go to straight six straight NBA Finals means you're healthy, means you've aligned yourself with a lot of great players, it means you have a great team. LeBron James has had all three of those at all times. This this year, he's not going to have that. Something's going to happen either health-wise, either there's going to be a team to recognize like, hey, we're not that bad, we can play with them. Something's gonna click because if you if you recall, the Bulls had the Cavs dead to rights two to one, and then the Cavs won. And it was two years ago they won in Chicago. LeBron hits a, a game winning shot or whatever the case may be. If you guys remember that, then the next year in the Eastern Conference Finals, Cavs go up two nothing. They lose two straight to the Toronto Raptors. Finally, they beat them in six. So obviously, that being said, there's something where they. They know, and other teams know, we could play with them. It's just this is the year for a team to knock them off. They can't just simply say, well, you know, LeBron is the greatest player. He's the best player in the game. I'm going to lay down. Like, nobody did that for Jordan. Nobody did that for Kobe when he was the best player. Nobody did that for Magic Johnson. But for some reason, all these players today, they just lay down before LeBron James. Like, 
it's like I don't know what the intimidation factor is, but that's not gonna happen. That something is gonna click in one of these teams, Toronto, the Celtics. They're gonna give the the Cavs a run for their money, and then they're not gonna make it. Even though this sounds like crazy and foolish, because we're looking at the game right now. We're looking at everything right now. And right now, what I see is the Cavs are clicking on all cylinders, but they also have been resting players. They have been blown. They have blown leads, just like the oh um. The Golden State Warriors blew a lead in, in Cleveland. The next night, Cleveland lost. And the night after that, Cleveland blew a 20-point lead to the Celtics. So Cleveland is, has a propensity to do that as well. And for you to rely heavily on LeBron and Kyrie to perform at a high level every night in and night out, and you've been doing this for, this will be the third straight year. <laughs> if you rely, for three straight years, you can't keep relying on the same formula. That doesn't work. You have to switch a few things up. And I don't think they have enough dynamic pieces to switch things up. Emergence of Kevin Love is great. Kevin Love is, has turned up mainly into a jump shooter. And his confidence builds off his jump shot. If his jump shot isn't going, it's not, it's not great for the Cavs. They're not going to make it to NBA Finals. You heard it here first? Don't hold me on that. And you can laugh in my face if, if they do go to the NBA Finals. That's fine with me. But my, this is a prediction. So... We're just predicting things here. Houston Rockets, they're going to make it to the Western Conference Finals. I'm going to tell you why. The three-point shooting is crazy. They get a ton of offensive rebounds. They're not that bad defensively because you have Patrick Beverly putting them on the best defensive player. Then you have James Harden filling in that point guard role. He's already an MVP candidate. And they're shooting the three ball at a high clip. Now, when you get to the playoffs... Shooting threes is going to be a different story. You won't be able to shoot a ton of threes like you do in the regular season because you're defending it. They'll try to take away their bread and butter, but that's where James Harden comes into play because he gets to the basket. He goes to the foul line 10 to 12 times. He'll get guys in foul trouble. He'll get your best defender in foul trouble, and that spells trouble for anybody. They're going to make it to Western Conference Finals where either they'll face Golden State or the Spurs. Most likely Golden State, in my opinion. And they'll give Golden State a run for their money. It'll be like a six, seven game series because James Harden has the foul factor. He gets a basket. He's very crafty. I always said that he should work with, with the referees when he retires because he knows all the tricks in the book, hooks people, gets four point plays. He's he's a beast. But the Rockets, they're gonna get to the Western Conference Finals. And like Dan Tony's gonna get coach of the year. <laughs> Because whenever they're playing the seven seconds or less basketball and they get like 50 wins, Mike D'Antoni is already automatically a shoe-in for Coach of the Year. The Golden State Warriors will win the NBA championship. Now, this is not a, this is not a shocker. This is my prediction for them in 2017. They're going to win the NBA Finals. They're going to win the Finals in either a sweep or they're going to win it in five games. Here's why. It has nothing to do with the X's and O's. It has nothing to do with one player. I just think the losses that they've taken have brought them to a point where they don't care what everybody thinks. They don't care that everybody keeps saying they blew a 3-1 lead. They don't care that Kevin Durant joined the team that he could essentially beat and you know he blew a 3-1 lead as well. They don't care that Stephen Curry was not healthy last year in the finals because nobody else wants to admit that. They don't care. And Steve Kerr is using this season as a it's, a... it's a big powder keg. It's like an experiment. Like I'm going to throw a little bit of that, this, a little bit of that. I'm going to put a little bit of pepper. I'm going to sprinkle a little Mrs. Dash. I'm going to put a little Creole seasoning in it. I'm going to see what I can get out of the season. He's not. They're not taking the season as serious as we are. They're just concocting different lineups, different defensive lineups, trying different defensive things. This is not even what they're, they're going to be come postseason. Postseason, you're going to see like a different Warriors team. They're going to, of course, turn down the turnovers because that's a, one of their big issues. They like to turn the ball over a hell of a lot. They're going to shorten the rotation. They're going to finally submit a big man. Even they're going to get a trade. You know, trade Zaja or, you know, they're going to do something with JaVale, make him more of a full-time full center. Or they're, they're going to figure it out where they play that 
small ball death lineup. But then when they get to the finals, everything that people have said about them blowing leads, about Kevin Durant being soft, about, um, you know, they had to get Durant to, to beat LeBron, all these things that people are saying, it's going to be like their worst nightmare. It's going to be like, it's gonna be like that girl in high school that you everybody called her fat, everybody called her ugly. She was unpopular, and then you go out and graduate from high school. It's like two or three, maybe ten years down the line. She's super successful. She's super sexy, and she's doing her thing, all based on your hate, all motivated by everything that you said. People have been talking about the Warriors like they're not one of the favorites to win the championship. They're saying that they're small. They're saying that Curry lacks this. They're saying that they're not playing to their strengths. Even Curry has been kind of feeding into it. We're not playing to our strengths. All of that is just motivation for them to get better. Like If I was a commentator, if I was a, a, a team that wanted, did not want the Golden State Warriors to win, I would just praise them all the time. I wouldn't have done, definitely not do what LeBron did with the whole cookies and the 3-1 lead, all that et cetera stuff in his, his party. I would never talk to I would never do what Iman Shepard did saying, we want to bust their ass. We want to do this, that, and the third. All of that is just fuel for them to, to come back and kick, and kick in the doors. <laughs> That's all it is. If you remember what happened in 2014, the Spurs annihilated the Heat. And all of that was due to the fact that they blew the lead. where They were supposed to win game six. And Ray Allen hits the big shot. They lose in overtime. And then they barely lose in game seven. I think they lost by like seven or eight points. Tim Duncan misses a float in overtime. And it was just like, it was like, did this really happen? Like, did we really blow this? Did we really see the tro trophy in our grass? And that's what the Golden State Warriors are saying. Everything that people are saying against them, hating on them, it's just going to be fuel and motivation for them to come back and tear people's heads off. We're going to see some stuff that we've never seen from them before in the finals. It's going to be... A massive beating. Like they're gonna, they're gonna annihilate whoever they play. They're gonna annihilate them. It's just, it's just gonna be like, whoa, whoa. Like, what did we just see? Like, did they really just score 130 points in the finals? Yes. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That's what we're gonna see in the NBA finals. They're gonna dominate the finals. The other prediction I have for 2017 is the NBA is gonna rig it where they're gonna make some concessions and sanctions where it's gonna be obvious that they want the Cavs and the Thunder to, I mean Cavs and the Golden State Warriors to play in the NBA Finals. Mark my words, some plays on LeBron, a play on Kyrie, a play on Stephen Curry, a play on Durant, where guys from their opposing team on in either conference, they're going to get flagrant fouls and they're going to get ejected or suspended because they just want to see that rematch. The NBA is banking on this rematch. They want you to Tune in once again. They want you to sell crazy tickets. They want to sell each seat for five grand, even the ones in the nosebleed. This is what they want. And it's a little bit of collusion. It's a little bit of bamboozling fans, whatever you may have you. But you're going to see some crazy stuff in the playoffs. You're going to shake your head and say, this is bull. Like, why? If LeBron or, or the Warriors... And staff or Cavs staff, if they complain about a game being too close, they'll even try to say, to be determined. And they'll try to move a game where they'll make a three-day rest, a four-day rest, whatever the case is. They'll do some weird things that we've never, ever seen before. And that is going to determine how we get a Cavs-Warriors uh, finale, you know. It, like a Cavalier, I mean, Cavaliers, Warriors are trying to make it like Lakers, Celtics. And that can never be. Because the Lakers and the Celtics rivalry goes back 40, 50 years. Like in the 50s, in the 60s, in the 70s. We're talking about Wilt versus um, Russell. Kareem, you know, versus Russell as well. Um, we were talking about Magic versus Bird. We're talking about Jerry West versus. I mean, we're, we're going back. The years, Kobe versus Paul Pierce, about like crazy, crazy rivalries that this this little thing will never compare. Because if you look at the Lakers Celtics rivalry, there was like people getting clotheslined, people getting slapped, um, just just crazy competition. 
guys coming back, losing one year, coming back, winning the next year, coming back, losing the next year. Crazy. Like, you'll never see a rivalry like that again. That that That's like etched in stone. This is nothing. This is nothing. Especially if, if they had to suspend players in the whole process. This is nothing. Los Angeles Clippers, like I said before, they're done. Doc Rivers is going to trade Chris Paul or Blake Griffin. I'm going to tell you why. Free agency is coming up for, I believe, Chris Paul and or Blake Griffin. This team has reached its peak ceiling. They cannot go any higher anymore. They're done. Instead of having the risk of them not returning and signing, they'll be willing to make trades to get people to, to bring them in. Especially if you think about Chris Paul. Chris Paul is like, he's the kind of player where one team is like one point guard away from being in the finals. So if you trade him, you can get anybody, basically. You can get two or three players. If you trade Blake Griffin, you can get two or three players. And Doc Rivers knows that his time as the GM slash coach is coming short because the team has been at a standstill and they they haven't been to a Western Conference Finals. They just keep getting knocked out. Even last year when they beat the Spurs, when that was it last year or two years ago, they beat it was a Pacquiao fight. They beat the Spurs. I was like, I was amazed. I was like, wow. I was like, they beat the Spurs. They beat the Spurs. They could beat anybody. Because Spurs is pretty much everybody's kryptonite. And they couldn't do it. They couldn't advance further. So that being said, Clippers fans, say bye-bye to your Clippers. They're, they're done. It's like a, watching a, a Bugs Bunny cartoon. And he gives the guy a box and the bomb is in there. You're tick, 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 tick. Boom. Like, that's it. It's over. It's over. The team's done. So somebody's getting traded. Uh, I know it's not gonna be DeAndre Jordan. They love the they love the rim protection, but Blake Griffin most likely. Blake Griffin most likely, because if you trade Griffin and let's just say you get a Carmelo Anthony, then you're right back in the conversation of going to the NBA Finals. Because at least Carmelo Anthony he could post up, he could shoot. He's not a great defender, but he could rebound and he could space the floor for the team. He's another shooter. Clippers don't have a lot of shooting, how everybody would think. Chris Paul's not really like a great three-point shooter, but J.J. Redick is, and Carmelo Anthony would be if they'll add him. Um, Jamal Crawford comes off the bench, so that's not really in your starting lineup. Blake Griffin, he has improved his free throw shooting, but he's not as great of a free throw shooter as like a Carmelo Anthony. Or let's just say they, they traded Blake Griffin, and let's just say they get C.J. McCollum and Mason Plum, Plumlee. Like, dude. There's like a lot of different line line like changes that they could trade for Blake Griffin and, and get great 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 value. I mean, I'm talking about immense value. Same thing with CP3. They could trade CP3 and get a younger point guard that's that's not just as good. I'm not ever gonna say about CP3 is a top ten player. I don't know what happened with that whole Slam Magazine thing, but he's a top ten player, and they could trade him to get some kind of great value because as constructed, they're not gonna win because. This team, the guys aren't happy for each other. They're, the youth is not there. And they just don't not have enough shooting. To me, they don't have enough shooting. J.J. Redick is their only like knockdown shooter. Other than that, Jamal Crawford is kind of streaky. And they just need another star that can pretty much demand the ball without having to worry about being scared of Chris Paul. Because Blake Griffin's scared of Chris Paul. So there's going to be a trade made. Blake Griffin has already shown a propensity to hit the staff and get hurt. So they're going to trade him. Somebody's going to get traded and Clippers are going to explode. And that's that. So those are my predictions. Tony, um, Coach of the Year. Houston Rockets going to the Western Conference Finals. Cleveland Cavaliers not making the finals. Golden State Warriors winning the NBA Finals by a large, huge margin. Um, Russell Westbrook, unanimous MVP. Clippers. Trading Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, Boogie Cousins, getting traded to the Los Angeles Lakers. These are my predictions for 2017. Let me know what you think about them. Let me know what your predictions are. These are just my thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. Just my thoughts. This is Vlad from Hoops Junction, where hoops meets hoopla. Like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.